Good morning, so our plan today was a little bit scuppered. We had planned to go and see Anger Watt at sunrise because so many of you guys recommended it and then this happened at like midnight last night. I got a flat tire, it made a very loud noise and it woke me up and I got very scared. Um, but there was a flat tire and it was like really late and Alex I think had showered and was, I had only just got into bed and we were like we can't now get up and do this little flat tire and then wake up at like 4.30 in the morning. So we were like hey let's just go to Angle Watt tomorrow at the, like in the day. So that's what we're doing instead, we're just going there for the day. And there's another place we wanted to go called Kompong Pluck which is near CM Reap. I don't know if maybe, actually, wait. I don't know if maybe it's Ashley. Wait. I don't know if maybe it's Ashley. Wait. I don't know if maybe it's Ashley. Wait. I haven't introduced the fact that we're in CM Reap because the last vlog we were traveling here. We traveled here safe and sound. We're in our hotel room. It's gorgeous. It's lovely. I way prefer it to Phnom Penh. It's so much more chilled. And there's a vegetarian restaurant which we've eaten at three times just around the corner. But yeah, there's another place called Kompong Pluk, which is a village on stilts that we wanted to go to. So. If we go to Angle Wat and we find, because sometimes it's crowded and busy and you don't want to like spend hours and hours on end at some a certain place, if we're done there, then we might come back and go to Kompong Pluk, but we may not because it's 30k away and it might be too late. Anyway, I'm getting verbal diarrhea. We're gonna go get breakfast upstairs because I'm hungry. Okay. Sorry. <laughs> they like me talking. So there's definitely a little bit of a language barrier when we ordered breakfast, so it's gonna be a little game see what actually arrives at the table. I'm excited to see. <laughs> so it did actually come out correctly. Hey. This is not going to be enough food though, so luckily we have some papaya in the room. Pineapple jam. I know, how cool. I've never seen that. But yeah, we bought some papayas last night, didn't we? So we can have some of that in the room. Can I get in the sink? <laughs> yes. Alex is getting frustrated at having to change the tire. We can't do it. <laughs> oh my God. Every other time the method I use works and today when we need to get out of the house and we need to leave, it won't work. Oh. Oh my God, it's so close. It's gonna do it. Yes. Oh my god, finally. <laughs> it just deflated. I can't believe that. We've literally, what time is it? We've literally spent an hour trying to fix this because it's such a tough tire to get on and off. So we are truly, truly fed up. We tried it three times. It is now half 12, so we've wasted our entire morning trying to fix this tire to no avail. And I'm a bit worried about going there this late in the day and there being, I don't know what it's gonna be like. But we can definitely salvage today. We can go have a really nice meal and then go to Angle Watt and I'm sure that will lift our spirits because it'll be beautiful. So we can just forget about this and deal with this when we find a bike shop somewhere. <laughs> and it looks bloody great. I have a burger, which looks so good and that's like some kind of vegan cheese. It's Alex. Cheese. Huh? Some fire cheese. Oh, you're putting a bib on. Just like Lydia. Mm -hmm. <laughs> and then um, Alex has got a tempeh sandwich and look at that pesto. All this bread looks delish too. And I also have an acai bowl on the way because I got one at the other, did I say this? There's another Vibe Cafe in Phnom Penh. I don't think we vlogged it though, but it's so aesthetic. And I posted a picture of it on my Instagram because it was so good. Mm. How many thumbs up? Ten. <laughs> this song has legit been playing 
since we arrived over and over and over. And the worst part is it's not like a song that has like a verse and a chorus and like, it's just this, this um, singing over and over and over and over and over and over. Here it goes again. What time is it? 46. And when I filmed the first clip, it was 36, and it had been on for at least 15 minutes before that. And off we go, finally. 2 p.m. off to Angle Watts. Maybe it'll be less busy in the morning, because everyone wants to go in the morning to get it done. That's my optimism. Get See the optimism go. that comes out of eating food. <laughs> I'm so much more optimistic now I've eaten. That was so delicious. Vibe Cafe, you have a special place in my heart. Right, so we finally got here. Um, it's like 3 p.m. and our driver is really lovely and he's, he's waiting till we're done and he said come back around 5 because I think it closes at 5 anyway. But he said it's two hours is a good amount of time. And look, check this out. Pretty cool. So I'm I'm really looking forward to seeing this. Don't know what to expect, really not done any research on it. Probably should have done. Maybe you can whack your phone out. Don't what? Do some research. I hope maybe there'll be plaques places to tell you about things. Uh, who knows? <laughs> Otherwise we can just admire the beauty. I know it's a very old temple and it's a very large temple, so yes. This um, pathway across the water is really funny because it's bouncy. It looks like bungee. Really nice. It's really, really nice. Really nice on your knees. Yeah. Really nice on his tail. What's he got? He literally ran over there to the bag of food and scratched it open straight away. Go there. It's cool that there's like a whole grounds as well and that the entrance and the grounds kind of reminds me of like an English like manor house. I yeah, know that this like is a, a religious temple, but... National Trust or something. Yeah, like when you go to National Trust, you have the, like, the main entrance and then all the grounds and all the beautiful trees, except for this is like a tropical version. There's like palm trees and obviously it's a religious building. But it's kind of funny seeing that type of thing in like an Asian style, Cambodian style, Khmer style. Got there in the end. Oh no, it's raining again. Oh no. Definitely a theme here. long corridors here in my garage it's like when like the way after the way after the way like perspective is cool
that it's raining is kind of romantic, isn't it? I like it. Yeah, me yeah. too. So it's like running and hiding inside the temple, it's kind of nice. I just said that Alex, it gave me Colosseum vibes because of how old it is. Because the brick is so old. And I went to the Colosseum recently, like last year, so. Also gives me um, Tomb Raider vibes. It's really like a castle as well. This um, stone that's worn away is like what you see when you see medieval castles. But it's just so, oh, I don't know. It's the sort of thing you see in a movie, it's so cool. Alex just trodden up here, uh, puddle. Whoa. No, no. <laughs> it feels like it's like 40 degrees right now. It's so hot, isn't it? Mm-hmm. It's about 32. I need a shower. So this is the scaffolding the monks would have used <laughs> to build the temple. Apparently, it was once a Hindu temple mm -hmm. in the 12th century. That's what it was originally built for, I think. And then I think it was changed into a Buddhist one or, I don't know, changed. Um, by the end of the 12th century. And seeing as I did art history, right, I'm looking at this and I never studied any sort of Asian art history at all, like any anything. I only ever studied the West, which is quite typical with art history. And there's like a lot of debate about the fact that art history tends to only track Western art. But anyway, um, I did lots of things to do with Italy and Greeks and Rome and I can't help but look at this and be like, hmm, is there an influence there? Because Alex was saying to me, oh, they wouldn't have been aware of each other. But when well, you I look I don't at... think so, maybe. Yeah. Well, I don't know. Any of you guys know? Because when I look at this, I see Roman temples, which are obviously a lot older than this because of the, um, the big columns, the archways, the sort of corridors, just the monumental element of it, and like even the archway and the entrance. But I've forgotten the words because like, it was so long ago, but there's a, there's a word for those big entrances that don't have any purpose they're not a part of the building they're just like a an entrance with archways just to sort of build up to the main event all the friezes along the top with the the people but i think that's common amongst art like forever having friezes of like, like story so i'm sure all of these if you went on a tour guide they tell you some of the friezes mean a specific story or a specific religious tale or something um and there's lots of women like on the temp on the um columns which is very Greek, so I don't know. And also like all the floral tops to all of the columns was like what they used to do in Rome as well. So I'd be interested if any of you are history buffs and you know more about Asian culture than I do because I'm not learned on it. There's just so many similarities and if there isn't an influence there, then it's an, isn't it interesting that they both came to the same conclusions for what is beautiful and what is like um, impressive and what connected them to um, their religion and what sort of showed off their splendour the most. If there was no connection there, there was no influence there. I kind of feel like there has to have been because Rome at one point basically ruled the world, so I think there must have been an influence. But I'm going to look this up when I go home. So Alex just said it's based on what they thought the garden of the Hindu gods would look like. Something like that. You know like Mount Olympus or that? I think it's similar mm -hmm. to that. Yeah. I think so. they were saying they were it's like a big complex. Yeah. But um, this was the only one that wasn't like fully abandoned, mm -hmm. apparently. I think. Um, I think because it's a good place to live, I guess. But it's weird. Whenever you visit a place like this, you can't help but like transport yourself back to the time and think, what would it have been like? Because there would have been probably like rooms and tables and chairs and plants and paint probably on the walls Cafes and. Cafes. 
and like, you know, people walking around and it would have been so lively. I wonder if there's any movies that have um, been set at Anger War and have like transformed it um, into like the time, what it would have been like. Let me know if there is a movie that has that. Because obviously you have movies with like the Colosseum and like ancient Greece and Rome, like all the time, so many movies with that. So you kind of get a better image, but I wonder if there are any movies going back to the heyday of Anger Wat. It's coming up to Golden Hour too now. The shadow's looking really pretty outside. So I might have to go and get some more pictures out there. Can you see the light, all the shadow? Best time to take photos, just before sunset. It's like four, nearly 4.30, so it's getting to that good time of day. <laughs> Didn't die. I can imagine them reading like books underneath that tree. That's a good book reading tree. This is a nice little bit of shade as well to just sit. Isn't it Alex? I feel like the tiny tan I got has just disappeared. I thought I'd go to Canada. I literally was like, I'm gonna be, when I get to Canada, we're gonna be super ripped and fit because we've been cycling so much and we're gonna be really tan. And the reality is like, I'm just as pale <laughs> and I'm definitely not any fitter. Maybe well, I'm a little bit we're fitter. fitter, but we're not skinnier. Well, you couldn't get skinnier if you tried. My legs are. Yeah. Like I don't feel like I am. Oh. Maybe I'm marginally. Not. You are underneath. <laughs> So we're home at the hotel and I've just done all the packing for our clothes and our backpacks and Alex is now putting the bikes away. <laughs> so frustrating because he got them out like a couple of days ago and now he's putting them back in again and we didn't use them because of the flat tyre situation. Fingers crossed we'll find a bike shop in Hanoi. We had such a nice time, Angleworth was beautiful and then our driver was so nice, he's picking us up tomorrow because we're going for the sunrise. And we had an amazing dinner and the woman there from Thai, she was Thai and she was so friendly. I was just saying to Alex, like, I think Thailand has been my favorite place so far by far because everyone there, just they just treat you like your family and like you're at their house. She brought out like desserts that we didn't ask for. She's like, I've got special Thai dessert, they're vegan, you can try them. And she didn't charge us, she just like No, she didn't charge us, no, she just gave them as a present. Yeah. And that's like the feeling I got in Thailand, which is why I felt so at home there. Like it, it didn't feel like there's been a couple times when we've been in like moving from place to place, like especially in Phnom Penh, where I felt a bit homesick because I didn't feel very, I guess it's such a crazy busy city, but like in Chiang Mai and it just, I don't know, everyone there was just so nice. But yeah, the driver we have is really, really friendly and lovely and he basically like stayed with us all day and he's picking us up tomorrow at 4.30 to go to the sunrise. So we're gonna pack up and um, go to bed because we have a very early start. See you in like eight hours. A few hours. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, and Alex has got all of this. At least you're getting quick at it now. We've realized that we really want to get a bike box each. They're hundreds of pounds, but Nat had one and it was so easy because it was smaller and it had all the different slots for the different parts, so like your wheel and your handlebar and everything you slot in and then you can wheel it around when you're at the okay. airport. Especially, yeah, if you're traveling, yeah. I think it can also save a lot of money in terms of the size of vehicle you need to get. Because mm -hmm. these are so huge, you can't really fit them yeah. in a taxi very easily. But with this, you can kind of break it down into almost like a square that can fit in any boot. Yeah. So you don't need to get a minivan, you just get like a slightly bigger car. So we're thinking of investing in one of those later on, but yeah. Good night. This video is going to be long. It is, but it was really fun. Yeah. That's why if you have a shit morning or a shit day, don't think it's over. You can still salvage it and you can still make the most of it for sure. You can have a good time. So that's a little message for today. We'll see you bright and early for a sunrise.